Hello and welcome to the Monday, May 13th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from San Diego, California. If you are reading our Sands and Storm Center diaries, you probably have noticed that Didi is really well known for creating a ton of useful little tools, typically in Python. If you want a collection of all of Didi's tools, nothing easier than that with the S Suite. That's a Docker container that contains all of Didier's latest tools pre-installed. So great if you have to analyze documents and the like, that's what usually his tools are really great at. And the Cisco Talus research team has released uh, details about a new vulnerability in the SQLite 3 database. This vulnerability does allow remote code execution. It is a use after free vulnerability and certainly exploitable. However, before you go out and panic and try to rush out an update, consider that an attacker would have to actually send a custom, carefully crafted SQL command to the database. If you do allow users to execute arbitrary commands against the database, well, uh, that's usually already a user in a more trusted uh, position. So being able to execute code on the SQLite server may not really give them that much more access. So this is nothing that could easily be exploited, for example, for a web application or something like that, unless you do allow for SQL injection. A patch is available and you should certainly apply it, but uh, no need to rush it. So if you don't see an updated package for your particular operating system, you can certainly wait a couple days. And talking about patches, NVIDIA released updated video drivers for its GeForce, Quattro and Tesla video cards. These Windows drivers fix three different vulnerabilities that can lead to privilege escalation. These are these very typical sort of kernel mode driver vulnerabilities where the video driver does run with elevated privileges. So being able to execute code via the video driver does also lead then to elevated privileges. And yet another step towards passwordless authentication. Windows 10 with the May 2019 update is now certified for FIDO2. FIDO2 essentially does allow browsers like for example Edge, Chrome and Firefox to access biometric authentication features like Windows Hello and use them in order to also log you into web applications. So far, most of the time, FIDO2 is implemented via USB tokens. And for example, Google has come out with one, but uh, this FIDO2 certification for Windows 10 means that you actually can take advantage of this authentication mechanism without any additional hardware, just by using hardware that's already being used by the operating system, like facial recognition and fingerprint readers to then authenticate via the browser to web applications supporting this new standard. Android 7 and later is already certified, so really the last holdout here is iOS. Not clear if iOS is working on it. At least Safari promised to support FIDO2 in its next version. And some advanced Android users over the years have become to rely on the Android Debug Bridge backup and restore feature in order to create backups of their Android phones and then restore them on new devices. While ADB, this Android Debug Bridge has been associated also with some attacks if it was inappropriately exposed, overall backup and restore hasn't sort of really caused any problems in that respect. Nevertheless, it appears that Google will be turning off uh, these features in future versions of Android. Based on a message that was added in a recent commit to Android that warns users that these features will be deprecated in the future. This could also affect you if you are trying to make forensics backups of Android devices. They also often take advantage of this utility. 
Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.